Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. The guy right next to me, his name is Tim. He's so wise. He's so ready because today we're going to talk about some HCF shenanigans. Not the whole department, Tim, mind you, just a rogue one. But that makes it nonetheless impactful, doesn't it? Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn the notification bell on. We are going to dive into this. And Tim, how are you? The Monday is here. The weekend. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? I am. I mean, what a way to start off the week, right? You know, one, <laughs> yes. a brand new scandal. Yeah. It, it seems that we have a lot of these. Yeah. I mean, like, we've got a, like a Rolodex of scandals happening recently. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be a shortage mm. of them, and it just seems like the people in charge are just running amok, doing whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Crazy how that Isn't works. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Well, it turns out, <laughs> it turns out, Tim, it turns out that on this beautiful Monday morning, we have reports coming out for the people of the Second Legacy that there was a former ATF firearms investigator who apparently was running guns into Mexico which was then also swept under the rug. This is a situation. <laughs> yeah, he, he's former now, but at the time he was in the yeah. ATF. <laughs> huh. Yeah. I, I have got so many thoughts. Here's just here's my brief thoughts out of the top of my brain, and then we're going to get into the story. We've got Project Thor, which we discussed, ATF. We've got uh, Fast and Furious, which we discussed, ATF. We've got Mexico lawsuit against Second Amendment companies here in the United States. There are so many ways we can go with this, Tim, and I am here for it. And just to be clear, I, this has nothing to do with the aforementioned. This is a brand new case. Nothing. Yeah. Brand new. <laughs> this brand is new. Brand new and spicy. Yeah. Oh, let's get it. Let's get it. Mr. Producer, throw number one up there so we can bring the people in on this beautiful Monday morning. Former U.S. firearms investigator illegally trafficked guns to Mexico, the government document alleges. Now, of course, Tim, it alleges. We've got to be fair. It alleges, you know, there's no like hard lined proof with investigations and international commerce between the United States and Mexico. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, yes, there is. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there is. And, and, you know, you're 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 innocent unless they can prove you guilty. But if they never take you to court, mm -hmm. then, hey, you're never guilty of anything. I mean, t then technically the ATF's in the clear, right? Wrong, sir. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. Let me show you. Let me show you the, the guy in question, the alleged guy in question. Number two, Mr. Producer. This is in Monterey, October 20th. Jose Luez Meneses. I'm just going to go with that, Meneses. A Mexican national who worked as an investigator for ATF at the U.S. consulate in Tijuana admitted, admitted to buying firearm parts online and at a California gun store and trafficking them into Mexico for profit back in 2017, according to the letter and an ATF memo from the time obtained by Reuters. First of all, do we have a random occurrence of journalism happening by Reuters? I know, right? What? <laughs> what? We're going to report on this until they get too much heat, and then they're going to, you know, assist in the cover-up, probably. Ah, the old, the old psych. Yeah. We're, we're pretending mm. to be reporters today, but not really. Yeah. That's kind of weird. But Tim, Tim, like, I mean, but Mexico sued the United States gun mm -hmm. manufacturers. They, it's the manufacturer's fault, though. Yeah. And the state of Did California, he, he got some of the stuff out of California. Mm. You know, I didn't think that was possible. A fine I, point. I thought they had locked all that down. Apparently not. Man. Online. Man, you, you know what? You yeah. know what, Tim? Harken back to something. See how, how sharp you are this morning. Maybe. Maybe they went to the Fish and Wild Game, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, and they uh, they stole those AR-15s that they bought to kill the deer on that island. Remember that? <laughs> so remember that, really remember that, yeah. yeah. yeah this so was, that was it, California. Yep, they just moved from one area to the uh, mm -hmm. next, you know, mm -hmm. so they're just going to mm -hmm. go around and make news mm -hmm. around the globe with those uh, yep. those weapons of war. Those, the weapons of war from helicopters in the biggest <laughs> gun control state in hair gel kingdom. And yep. last I read, they're yep. not backing off of that either, so. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. They're still going to go ahead with the deer because, kill, yeah. <laughs> anyway. because application and and uh, theological, not theological, that's not the right one. Application and rhetoric just don't line up sometimes in gun control world. But that's OK, because uh, uh, at, Tim, I'm sure this is a misunderstanding, because after all, the ATF has told us that they knew about Project Thor. And they were they knew all about the smuggling and the trafficking and the gun rings and the straw purchases. They just didn't tell us that it was one of their agents. I know, right? So, I mean, well, gosh. I mean, it's a small point. It's it's not, it's not uh, that important, you know. Man, and and if all they did oh, was just pass a law making this activity illegal, we wouldn't have this problem. Oh wait, Tim, oh wait, Tim, you are a paragon, a visionary. If only, if only, if only we had. Oh, man. Okay, you know what? That was a good little workout for our sarcasm. Let's keep going. I like that. All right. So number three, Mr. we got clips all day, people. The trafficking of U.S. weapons south across the border is a top diplomatic issue in Mexico, hence why they sued the gun manufacturers for billions of dollars uh, and got thrown out in court a lot. 
Mexican officials accused their American counterparts of not doing enough to staunch the illegal flow of these guns, which they say help arm drug cartels and contribute to the country's high homicide rate. Well, it's a little awkward when the ATF agents are doing it. Yeah. And I love how the, the, the Mexican government's laying the blame of all this at our feet when they're the ones importing yes. illegal drugs mm-hmm. into our country. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they wish we would stem the flow of firearms into their country. Well, we wish you would stem the flow of fentanyl oh, yeah. into ours. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that, uh, that border wall swings both ways. Oop. Did I say it, Tim? Uh-oh. Did I say it? Oh, man. Because, you know, you know, logic would dictate, you know, if I'm like pulling my, my straight Vulcan right now, logic would dictate that if you've got one straight little place and you've got guns going this way and you've got drugs going this way, you would think that something right in the middle would make that harder. No, the border's secure. I, I, oh. I, I just saw the oh. tweet yesterday. Sorry. Yeah, the borders Sorry. are uh, Harris. She said that oh. the border is secure. She's, yeah, we, we got nothing to worry she's... about. I also read a report oh, that there are more people. There, the people coming over the border now, uh, Mexican nationals are now in the minority of the people coming across the southern border. So we got yeah. people from all and over you know the what? world coming across the southern border. That's... It's not even people from Mexico. Just, mm. It's just the new mm-hmm. doorway into the United States, apparently. Mm. But it's closed. You it's closed. What? You know what, Tim? It, Tim, yeah. you know what, though? Here's a strong point bring comes to mind. Diversity makes us stronger, even in our open border policy. It does. It does, Tim. Diversity makes us stronger. I almost can't say that without laughing. Anyway, let's keep going because it just it just goes downhill, Tim. It's it's Monday morning. We're not ready for this. I know. So here's here's some hard facts from the Mexican government. Nearly 70 percent of trace firearms used to commit crimes and seized in Mexico come from the United States, according to the ATF. They kind of left out the footnote that says their agents do it (laughs) anyway. um, So a senator sent some more letters, Tim, because you know how I love me some senator letters. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Grassley letter. When we name letters, that's when something's good. The Grassley letter dated October 18th, which cites the 2017 ATF memo and information described as whistleblower disclosures, accused the agency of not conducting a full investigation in the matter. Quote, if these protected disclosures are true and accurate, they illustrate a failure by the ATF to hold its employees accountable for criminal criminal misconduct. No. Stop it. They would never do that. They're a law enforcement they agency. Wouldn't. They're supposed to enforce no. the laws, not break yes. them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But the Grassley letter. But the Grassley letter. Whistleblower disclosures, that's always tasty and delicious. And after all, Tim, this happened in 2017. And here we are in 2023. And, and guess who hasn't huh. gone to court? The guy running hmm. guns. That's so weird. It's so weird how we no. seem to always be on the receiving end of backhands for our gun rights, but then the ones who always give the backhands are always really not great. Could you imagine if it were me mm-hmm. or you that was running guns? And it gets better, folks. How, well, how they'd be they, better looking. How they I'll were running that. guns is, is even more entertaining, right? How they're getting them across <laughs> the border is pretty we're, special. We're, we're getting to that, yeah. But if it were you or I that were doing this, we mm-hmm. would be under the prison where they have the J6ers. That we would never mm-hmm. see the light of day yeah. again. And here yeah. we are be- in 2023 talking about this yeah. thing that took place in 2017. And th- th- nothing. nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, nope. But sweeping mm-hmm. it under the rug. Yeah. They don't want to investigate it because that'll cast light on it. Yeah. And they don't want to show the world what they're actually up to, which is no good. When they're it's, not trampling the rights of U.S. Look. citizens, they're breaking their own laws. Yeah. It's really not a good look. And if there was ever a reason, let's take a little sidebar, because you, you brought up a very good point. Um, if there's ever been a reason to keep the ATF as an individual agency so we control the funds and control what they do, I mean, like, could you imagine if this was in a bigger bureaucracy like the FBI or something like that? I mean, like, uh, there's a memo back in 1912 that uh, <laughs> said something about a Zimmerman note with Mexico wanting to partner with Germany against world war action. I mean, like, dude, the, you would never hear about any of this, by the way. That's all actual factual. Yeah, yeah I know. I thought that, that was a pretty up. interesting tie into history there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, a little tip of the cap, a little uh, thank you. But yeah, it's just, it's interesting how, like, when you look at the ATF and how they have such like, you know, the left likes to make them a victim of everything. Like, yeah. their floors are caving in with all the paperwork. We need digital for the floors. It's for the safety of the floors. <laughs> for the wooden floors. Those are trees. Yeah, so we got to save the trees. It's the, exactly. Because we can't make more trees and, and buy another house or, or like, you know, another building because we're the federal government. We don't maze, waste money. Oh my gosh, it hurts so bad, dude. It hurts so bad. But if they what? need a few extra bucks, they can just run guns across the border. 
Oh no, oh, that's too sensitive. It's yeah, just alleged. Sen- it's alleged. Alleged. You can it's allegedly alleged-ed. run guns yes. across the alleged border. Yes. See that YouTube? We can play the game too. Allegedly. All right. So <laughs> allegedly, we can allegedly. So play now the let's game. find out how they do it. That's right. We allegedly play the game of allegations. So on number six, let's dive into this this way that he did. This. My favorite because, part Tim, of the story. I think you brought up an interesting point. This is a good yes. one. Here's, it. Here's where it starts. Um, the ATF did confirm and had received the letter, talking about the Grassley letter, and said the agency investigates such allegations and takes appropriate action, declining to discuss details of the case. Um, nah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm, no, no. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> a U.S. government official said that's what's happened in this case. Oh, so you took care of it internally. You can't tell us. You didn't say anything about it, but don't just trust you. Okay. Quote, the embassy... Ooh, now we're at the U.S. Embassy in Mexico. The embassy found out about suspicious activity, revoked compound access within a day, did an investigation, and fired him within a month. It's terrible that it happened, but this is exactly how it's supposed to work, the official said, talking about not not gun running, talking about how they get them fired. The U.S. government has no tolerance for that sort of behavior, except if you go back to the same earlier point, um, the ATF handles these things internally, and we don't discuss details of the ongoing cases. Right. We handle internally. Uh, just go away and don't talk about this ever again. Just go away. Just don't yeah. talk about it. We'll handle it. Trust me. Trust me. It's okay. We didn't shift him to another part of the government. Yeah. Um, but now- <laughs> You broke a federal law, we're going to handle this administratively. You, yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's okay. Slap, it's okay. Slap on we're, the pickle We're going to handle it inside- yeah. Exactly. Slap on the pickle. Don't enjoy it. Get out the door. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you. And we don't talk about it because uh, the the integrity of the ATF is in question. First rule of ATF is <laughs> don't talk about the ATF. Yes. Don't talk about the ATF. Yeah, it's like Fight Club. <laughs> Man, that's two great references in this video. So now let's talk about the plates, the diplomatic plates. Number seven, Mr. Producer. This is so, this is so insane. Okay, here we go. The internal investigation into Manessis began when a firearm parts vendor called the U.S. consulate. So this was actually discovered by a firearms parts vendor, not even the ATF. <laughs> we got this ATF agent buying a whole bunch of parts. Seems to be going to Mexico a lot. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. So, so this is the private sector actually tipped this off. Called the U.S. consulate in Tijuana, Tijuana to report suspicious purchases, according to Grassley's letter, the Grassley letter. The tip led U.S. officials to interrogate Manessas, who admitted to buying firearm parts in the U.S., smuggling them into Mexico and handing them off to his brother, a Mexican police officer and a former Mexican soldier, according to the ATF memo. Oh, God, there's that memo again. ATF agents from the San Diego office then searched the post office box that Manessas said he used for the purchases where they found assault-style rifle parts and high-capacity magazines in California, nonetheless, Tim. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness. How could this ever happen? Man. Well, you know, at Man, least the, he handed uh, it off to a, uh, a police officer in Mexico. So this is just law enforcement <laughs> and, law enforcement. This is just a, a typical exactly, law enforcement exactly. transfer of firearms. I mean, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. And as, and as a former soldier, it's almost like that's cited in the actual lawsuits against the uh, manufacturers in the United States that, oh, I don't know, maybe there's corruption. <laughs> anyway, you know, whatever. Right. Let's continue, though. So here's the here's the Tim's favorite part. Yeah. We're going to coin it. Manessis used a vehicle with diplomatic plates to avoid being searched at the border while smuggling the firearms, according to the letter. In total... Manessas said he bought enough parts to assemble eight AR-15 rifles. God, you know how much mass casualty that is, yeah. Tim. That is hmm. eight weapons of mass destruction. According to oh. him. He may have misplaced a yes. zero or two. Exactly. I don't know how much money is but it's in okay. eight rifles, but hey. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but it's okay, Tim. It's okay because Manessas was placed on administrative leave and then terminated in 2017, the memo said. Hmm. Oh, problem man, solved. ATF you know, doesn't talk about ongoing. Hey, cases. If you're going to smuggle, you know, contraband across borders, at least have diplomatic immunity so you can just walk right across. Got I to. mean, got well, to. I mean, that, that's that's not something that deserve, deserves an investigation. That's just normal course of business nope. for U.S. government not officials. Yep. There's mm-hmm. nothing to see yep. here, folks. Here's the rug, and Allegedly. we're just going to put this right there and put the rug back down. Hey, look, problem uh-huh. solved. You know, if, <laughs> hey, they handle things internally, Tim. Yeah. Internally, if a tree falls and, in the woods and there's and, nobody there to hear it, it didn't really fall. You know. You know? What? That's totally true. Did it actually fall? If the diplomatic plates drive across the border, but there's no one there to drive them, did they drive across the border? I mean, like, honestly. If nobody got a picture, did it really happen? Hmm? Exactly. Ipso facto. Well, there's no, there's no evidence. Yeah. <laughs> there's not. It's just, it's so comical, dude. And like, guys, we're having fun with this because it's so egregious and so stupid. But these are the exact same people who are telling us that we can't have this, can't have that. A piece of metal is a machine gun. You can't have frames and receivers. You can't have pistol braces because it makes it a full auto M1 Abrams tank in your back pocket. I mean, literally. You're not to be trusted. 
But look what God. we do. <laughs> it's it's yeah. so bad. Yeah. It's so bad. But don't worry. We have the Grassley letter. It's just – yeah. and, and this is what we man. know about, guys. These are the things that, <laughs> that come to light. Imagine how much stuff is going on we don't know about. What is oh. it, 10 to 1? I, it, Allegedly. It, you know, this <laughs> this stuff is going on, I would imagine, all over the place. And only every once in a while does something leak into the media and then yeah. Reuters does an accidental act of journalism and reports on it. Other than that, mm. yeah. Just, we'll see what else happens. But don't worry, Tim, because we get to reference we get to reference Grassley Letter again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Number eight, Mr. Producer, because here comes Grassley Letter. In Grassley Letter, he's accused the agency of treating the allegations of gun smuggling like an administrative matter and questioned whether ATF investigated possible links between Manessis and his associates and cartels. The ATF memo, there's that memo again. The ATF memo is detailed summary of Manessa's case prepared by a top ATF official in Mexico at the time and addressed to the then head of Mexico's specialized unit to investigate cases of terrorism and arms trafficking. But it's unclear whether the memo was ever sent. Well, there we go. There's the problem. Mm, man, well, wouldn't you know it? Mm. We're all good here, folks. Can't, Nothing to see. The memo was never sent. Can't fix what you don't know about. So See? It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful that way. Allegedly, all of these things occurred. This is just a story from yesteryear. It's a myth. It's a legend because you know we can't we can't accuse people. No. Um, yes, we can. They, they're they're guilty as hell. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so this this is what we are trying to drive this together. This is not Fast and Furious. Again, no. this is a separate thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. If you're diving into this and thinking, oh, this is just an extenuation of the border agent that was killed. Uh, Brian Terry was his name, I believe. That was the name, right? Mm -hmm. Um, With Fast and Furious actions from the ATF. Nope. Totally different thing. So we've had a Fast and Furious action from the ATF actually in the operation. And now this is a separate thing with an ATF individual employee doing something very similar. Now – Tim, this is the part, my favorite part about all this as we wrap these things up, tying all of these dots together. I love, I love doing this. But if you zoom out and you look at what we're dealing with right here, you've got the ATF, the exact same time frame, running something called Project Thor, which they shut down, which had an exact map of all the gun trafficking rings, straw purchasers, cartels, everything across the United States because priorities changed and shifted. Then you have ATF doing this, or at least individuals doing this. Six or seven years prior, you had ATF running guns through Fast and Furious in New Mexico, which resulted in American citizens dying in crimes. Then you have the uh, um, the cross-border trafficking issue that we're talking about. You have Mexico suing the United States gun manufacturers for the problem that these people are contributing to and ignoring. And then you have leftist gun control attorney generals piling on and saying, yeah, we should destroy those companies too. At what point does this get too gross? I'm just curious. It's pretty gross. I, you just you, you got to sit back when you you know when you <laughs> when you lay it all out there like that, and you take a look at everything that's going on. It's pretty amazing in a bad it's way. Cute. It's like, is this really how we govern? Is this really how a government is supposed to function? Is this really right. how freedom looks? Because this, to me looks worse than a banana republic. We're being governed by a bunch of lunatics. They play by their own set of rules. They it, it, The whole saying of, you know, rules for thee, not for me, it's absolutely mm-hmm. true. And it plays out time and time again where our government gets caught doing things like this or people within the government. But the government is just as guilty in all of this in this case because they're the ones trying to cover it up, right? So, it, yeah, you had Fast mm-hmm. and Furious where that was a sanctioned deal by a government agency. Then you have this, which is, you know, a rogue agent, presumably, allegedly, going out mm-hmm. doing this. Mm-hmm. But the ATF is still at the center of it all. And when they're not yep. actively involved in it, they're actively involved in the cover-up. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's, how do we it's, get here? <clears throat> Meanwhile, you can't be trusted <laughs> with firearms, folks. The government thinks that you're irresponsible. Never mind what they're doing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just, I think the best way to sum this up is a little bit of hypocrisy, mm-hmm. a little dash of corruption, mm-hmm. a lot of infuriating, a tiny smidge of allegedly to cover us up, and you have a delicious little cookie of government right there. Yeah. So there you go. Your tax-paying dollars, hard at work for you guys. So I don't know. It's it. But there's but there was a memo, Tim. 
And there was a crash. You have a memo. And it'll be interesting to see if anything comes of this because Reuters, you know, years later, I'm glad they're, they came to the party, even though they showed up late. Uh, maybe something <laughs> will happen with this now that it's out there. But unless people talk about it, it'll probably just go right back under the rug yeah. where Reuters found it. So, you know, call your representatives, let them know that <laughs> we got to hold the ATF true. accountable for what they do. Jeez. Anyway. All right, folks. Thank you for watching the second legacy. Hopefully we didn't get your blood pressure up too much on this Monday morning. We'll talk to you guys soon.